only has eight genes. We, by comparison, have more than 20,000. We're going to look at two of these eight blue genes. One because it's responsible for getting the virus into a cell, and the other for getting it out again. Flu gets into cells with the hemagglutinin gene. So in order to penetrate cells, you could imagine that the hemagglutinin was sort of like a key. A key which we'll refer to simply as H. And that key unlocks the cell so that the virus can get inside. If it gets into your cell and take over the machinery of the cell and start making more copies of itself. But now the virus has a problem. These copies are stuck to that cell. That's where the other gene comes in. It's called neuraminidase, or N for short. Neuraminidase is critical for release. Back out. Getting back out. The virus copies use N to cut themselves free. And now each of them, armed with their own H's and N's, are off to infect more cells. In birds, there are 16 different kinds of H genes and 9 N genes. Every flu is some combination of these. Humans have only caught a few. The Hong Kong flu, which killed nearly a million people when it broke out in 1968, gets in with H3 and out with N2. So, it's called H3N2. In 1918, the virus which killed 50 million people was H1N1. Now there's the avian flu that's got everyone so worried. And it has a new combination of H's and N's. H5N1. The avian flu's H key, or hemagglutinin gene, can open the lock between birds and people, that is, transmit from birds to humans, but it still cannot open the lock between people, spread from one person to another, yet. But here's the problem. Once it's in our bodies, the hemagglutinin gene can change. It's as if it can fit the lock, but it can't turn it, which would be great if it stayed that way. But a virus's genetic recipe constantly changes, or mutates, as scientists like to say. And if just the right changes take place in the hemagglutinin gene, those changes could open the lock. Allowing it to spread between people. But exactly what are those changes? Going back to Taubenberger's recipe for the 1918 virus, Ian Wilson and his colleagues at the Scripps Research Institute found the answer to what the 1918 virus may have needed to spread between humans. They pinpointed two changes, or mutations. Only two mutations were sufficient to change the virus hemagglutinin to adapt to human receptors. So, could those same two mutations in the avian flu's hemagglutinin gene allow it to spread between humans also? To find out, they tried those same two mutations. To a surprise, we found that, in fact, we couldn't very easily change it with the mutations that occurred in 1918. So that suggests that it might actually be a little bit more difficult, and it might take a little bit more time for an H5N1 virus to be able to adapt to human lung cells. And that's good news. The Scripps team believes the H5N1, or avian flu, doesn't seem to adapt easily so that people can infect other people. Back at the CDC, Tumpy is taking a different approach to find out why these viruses are so deadly. Instead of experimenting with tiny variations in a flu gene, Tumpy is testing entire genes. He's looking at each of the 1918 viruses' eight genes one by one to see which ones caused it to be so lethal and which ones should be the target of new antiviral drugs. He started with that H key gene. He took one from his 1918 virus and put it in an ordinary seasonal flu. A contemporary influenza strain that doesn't kill. And all of a sudden it was lethal. And when he did the reverse, took the H key from an ordinary flu and put it on a 1918 virus. The virus was no longer lethal and didn't cause disease. So all signs seem to point to the H key, or HA as scientists call it, as being at least partly responsible for lethality. Well, there's something very intriguing about the HA. So intriguing that now Tumpy is planning to do something pretty radical. Put the hemagglutinin gene from the 1918 flu virus into the avian flu virus to see if he can create an avian flu virus that can spread from person to person. 
you want to combine H1 1918 with H5. <laughs> What's going on there? I think it'll be important as a set of experiments to understand how H5N1 works and by mix and matching it with genes from the virus that actually did that quite well, the 1918 virus, we were hopeful that we can figure that out. Well, I think from a scientific point of view, this is the only way to understand how these pandemic viruses work. Tumpy is one of the few people in the world who has the clearance to work with the live 1918 flu virus. So if we can figure out how to slow it down, studying this virus as a model virus, then perhaps we'll advance our knowledge on the avian H5N1 virus as well. Maybe we can figure out how to stop it. If Terrence Tumpy has his way, the virus that took so many lives in the past may help prevent another from taking more lives in the future.